So let's log back in and look at the real-time status functions that are available under the status menu. We'll start with uh, recent messages. Those of you who have used MailWatch with the Fender MX or MailScanner will recognize the next few screens. But if you look closely, you'll see that a lot of information and functionality has been added. The recent messages screen is divided into three sections. Today's batch totals, today's message totals, and the last 50 messages processed. Today's totals are counted from midnight local time. The legend for the color coding of messages listed in the messages process section is shown in the today's message total section. Double clicking over recent message listing will take you to the message details for that message. The message detail screen shows the information stored in the MailWatch database. It is important to note that the MailWatch only contains data for messages that have been accepted for delivery. If the Barricade MX SMTPF proxy rejected a message at the MTA level, there will be no record of that rejection in the MailWatch database. You will need to use the Reports Barricade MX log search menu to find that data. We'll cover that function in more detail later. Both the text box at the top center of the screen and the menu bar show the message ID of the selected message. For this example, the message ID is Nancy Bravo Bravo Hotel Romeo Uniform, Quebec, Sierra 003199. You'll also see a synopsis of the most important parts of the message header and a detailed spam assassin report. You can expand the message header section to show the complete headers of the message. Simply click on the message headers area and the complete header of the message will appear. Now let's scroll down to the bottom of the screen to see the rest of the available options. At the very bottom of the screen will be information detailing the delivery of the message, or if the message is quarantined or stored, you will have options that include releasing the message, black or white listing the sender, or feeding the message as spam or ham to the Bayesian filter. Since this message was quarantined, what we are seeing are the options for a quarantined message. And now let's move on to review the node status screens. The first node status screen is designed to give you an overview of what has happened during the last 24 hours. Two graphs and individual statistics will be shown for each gateway in the cluster. Since this example site has only one gateway, we are only seeing data for one system, VM2. If there were more gateways, all of the data that's shown for VM2 would be shown for each gateway in the cluster. The graph on the left details how many messages were processed each hour for the last 24 hours, while the graph on the right shows the average time it took to process a single message during each hour for the last 24 hours. A quick review of the data on this page will give you a good idea of your system's load and performance over the last 24 hours. And scrolling down the screen shows aggregate data for message batch statistics for all gateways, as well as useful information on top senders, recipients, IP addresses, and countries. But there is still more detailed information available for each gateway in the cluster. Let's scroll up and select the link behind the vm2.office.fsl gateway. This link brings up the message batch processing details. Two graphs are shown for each system. The graph on the left shows the total messages the system processed by hour and the proportions of those messages that were ham, spam or high scoring spam for each of the last 24 hours. The graph on the right shows the total average time required to process a message for each hour and the proportion of time spent performing each of the various scanning chores such as virus scanning or spam assassin scanning. With a little practice these graphs can be used to quickly identify problems causing delays in email processing. And the last table at the bottom of the screen shows the actual message batch statistics. Two new and interesting pieces of information shown in this table are the theoretical max messages per day and system utilization percentage. And the last status utility that we'll look at is the database status screen. Barricade MX Plus has been completely rewritten to store all data in a Postgres database. This database is kept on the master server and replicated to each gateway in a cluster. This database stores the configuration data for all of the controlled applications, such as SendMail, Barricade MX, SpamAssassin, MailScanner, as well as all status and historical data. 
The architecture of this design will allow for multiple system failures in a typical cluster without stopping email flow. This design will also allow very large sites to use a Postgres cluster as a master database server, servicing many scanning email gateways. So now let's go back to the main menu and look at some other features.